so in Genesis, we see that uh, Isaac and his family and Jacob and Esau are among hostile people, as the Jews are even to this day in the Middle East. Uh, the neighbors there, the, the Canaanites, the inhabitants of that land, don't want Abraham or Isaac or his children. They perceive them as a threat. That's why they're filling back in the wells that Abraham had dug. And Isaac has to dig them again. It's also why Isaac and Rebekah don't want Esau marrying one of these local gals. They would rather he do what Isaac did, which is find a girl from where Abraham came from, including a member of the extended family, because they know that God is calling them out to be a special tribe at this point, ultimately a nation, but they can't distinguish themselves if they live around people who don't know the true God in the same way that, as we talked about in class today, it's shameful that Catholics are indistinguishable from their secular neighbors in America, that they have abortions at the same rate, use contraception at the same rate, believe the same sorts of things about wealth and about um, politics and so forth. If you blend in with your neighbors who are not trying to be set aside or trying to be holy, or perhaps even trying to be good in any meaningful way, it's going to be bad on for you. That's why it's such grief when Esau marries one of the local gals, and Isaac and Rebecca are upset about that. In Job, we see Job pointing to the success of the wicked. We talked about that in class today. We begin 1 Corinthians, but let's look at something in the gospel, in the Sermon on the Mount. And of course, this is, or at least it used to be famous when people knew scripture better. Jesus says, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. In my Narnia class, I talk about how in Prince Caspian, when the children are trying to find Caspian along with uh, Trumpkin, they at first go a broad and easy path the kind of path where you could have a picnic on, as C.S. Lewis tells us. But later, the path that they really need to take that's going to get them where they need to go is pointed out by Aslan, the lion, who represents Christ, to Lucy, who is pure of heart. And at night, of all things, they have to travel a very narrow and difficult path. And Trumpkin is afraid that they're going to fall and break their necks. Well, broad is the way that leads to destruction, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few enter into it. But what on earth does that really mean? Well, let's at least take a look at something that is said by St. John Chrysostom as a commentary on that verse. He says, let us not therefore be sad when many sorrows befall us here, for the way is straight, but not the city. Straight meaning constrained, difficult, hard to travel, but not the city, meaning not the new Jerusalem, heaven. Therefore, neither need we look for rest here nor expect anything of sorrow there. In other words, keep in mind that this way is narrow. Even life itself is difficult, much less the Christian way. When he says, continues Chrysostom, quoting Christ, Few be there that find it. He points to the sluggishness of the many and instructs his hearers not to look to the prosperity of the many, but to the toils of the few. So if, my dear young students, you feel frustrated as you will, feel perhaps like a loser, but you're expending a kind of effort that no one around you is doing or taking seriously, that you could just as easily be doing whatever you want as your neighbors are doing whatever they want. Well, the pursuit of goodness comes only with effort. We see that even naturally. 
here on earth. If you want to be a good pianist, you have to practice and it's difficult. If you want to be a good scholar, you have to study and it's difficult and so forth. If you want to be a good Christian, on the one hand, Jesus says, my burden is easy. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And there is um, a kind of peace to cooperating with his grace. But at the same token, we must work out our salvation in fear and trembling. And there is a kind of ongoing sacrifice that goes along with this. And it's a narrow and a difficult way. It's not supposed to be easy. We don't hear that much from the pulpit. My dog is scratching at the door. Come here, Holly. Come here. Come on, Holly. She's sweet. I'll see if I can get her to come up on my lap. Come here, Holly. Come here. Come here, babe. Oh, I know. She doesn't like it. Oh, she doesn't like it when I hold her. But look at her. Look how sweet she is. You're a good dog. You love me, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. Okay. There goes Holly. We got her around Christmas time seven years ago. That's why she's Holly. But I've talked for long enough. I gotta let my dog out. She was scratching at the door. <laughs>